Yeah, had a lot of fun growing up. Eastern Beach and Eastern Park were our playgrounds, uh, especially in our younger days. And then when we got to teenagers, we started surfing and then got our cars and found out what girls were all about and uh, just sort of got into the, the groove there, then uh, got called up into the army. So uh, threw a spanner amongst the works for a while. We used to go down the Eastern Cemetery. I, I lived just up the road from the Eastern Cemetery. And we used to go down there and play and, and we'd break into the, the old, what are they, mausoleums or right. tombs, yeah. whatever, yeah. the ones that you could actually get down. I think they were probably put in by the Greeks or Italians or something at some time or other. And we used to break into those and sneak down and take our packet of Craven A <laughs> cork tips in there and <laughs> sit in there and have a smoke and anything to... Uh, Get a bit of mischief. Unlike the uh, the song that Blue Gum did, you know, you're only 19. Uh, red uh, Gum. Red Gum, was it? Red, red Gum, well, I don't think there was any Nashos went in at 19, was there? Not that I know, but you could yeah. volunteer, anyhow. Yeah, you could mm. volunteer, but uh, yeah, it was when we were 20 and and uh, draw the, the uh, ball out of the barrel with your date of birth on it and uh, and if I had my time over again uh, I'd be happy to do the same thing again. In fact I think national service should be compulsory now for boys and girls. Probably get rid of a lot of, a lot of our problems on the streets too. Sort them out a bit. Well when I came home from Vietnam, I came home on the, the aircraft carrier, the HMAS Sydney uh, and it was a 10 day trip. And uh, we got into Sydney, we had to uh, march down George Street, copped a lot of abuse and got a, got a few cheers, but got a lot of abuse. Um, university students, you know, ban the war type of thing, conscientious objections and plates. Came home on leave and then I got married uh, 10 days after I got home. I, I worked at the Harbour Trust in Geelong at the time uh, before I went, you know, when I went to the army. So I got my job back again and um, it took me a while to settle down, I suppose. It's um, got sick of people asking you questions all the time and they, you know, everyone's asking, oh, how many people did you kill? And you know, all those sort of things that you just walk away from. You, know, you, you still had your nightmares from time to time. And well, actually, going back to when I first came back, I, I got taken into the RSL as well. But my, my boss at the Harbour Trust, who was a return serviceman, and had only been in there for 10 minutes and almost got into a punch-up with an old World War II vet who told me that Vietnam wasn't a war. So that, that sort of mm. shied me away from things as well. I remained a member of the RSL. So I got involved and... Um, and uh, it, it's a great rehabilitation, you know, mm. we, thing, we can sit down, we can talk, uh, different wars, we've, we've got, still got one or two from Korea. Yeah, involved. yeah, yeah, um, Pricey's still around, yeah. You know, we tried to get the young vets from Afghanistan and Timor involved, but they're on a different wavelength, like we were when we yeah, came back. We were, exactly. we were on a different wavelength to the old war. Well, we, we, we knew we everything. <laughs> yeah, we did, we were, we were unpenetrable. But, yeah. um, but the fact that we can, we can sit down and, and talk about our war stories because we understand. Uh, not that we do it a lot, but we, we can do it. Mm. But we just have that camaraderie and um, it, it's terrific mm. getting involved with these sort of things. Mm. Yeah.